What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Miss Sophia the Diva, and I'm back here again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help but laugh. This this season finale of Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 10, I believe this was episode 18, uh, Nightmare on Peachtree Street. Uh, this was during the Halloween season of 2017. Uh, it celebrated Miss Eva Marcel Pickford's uh, birthday, which is October 30th. And yeah, this was an interesting way to close out the season. That means that the reunion is probably really going to be lit. If this is your first time here on this channel and you like what you see or you like what you hearing or whatever, yeah, thumbs up this video, subscribe to this channel, comment, let's talk about this episode. Eva and Candy were out shopping and preparing for her Halloween party that she's going to do. I find it very interesting that uh, Bravo let a friend of the show uh, host the closing party. As you know, almost every season finale ends with a party for Bravo shows. So that's nothing new. So this Halloween party is going to be taking place in a decommissioned church. Because Candy was like, uh, we having this in a church, really? And then a guy was like, it's decommissioned. They don't have services there anymore. So it's no longer a church. It's now a lease. So there you go. It's an event space now. Although I always feel some type of way about some place that was consecrated with the Spirit of God, but... You know, maybe they burn some sage or whatever they do to make it a, a secular place of, of of fun and worldliness. I don't know. Nene, um, Eva, and Cynthia went costume shopping as well together. They were discussing what was going on, you know, who was going to be invited. Nene was saying that Portia needs to do like a scarlet letter of confession before the group apologized and I'm like how many more times does Portia have to apologize for something she's already apologized to Candy about and has also apologized to you all on so many levels how long is this going to continue to go on I don't think that it's appropriate you know Cynthia is still bitter because perhaps Portia did speak some truth about Peter's infidelity that's still unclear to me all I know is that they are no longer together but yes Cynthia feels like they should still be friends first of all you and Peter only have business relations you don't have a child together and you are also trying you you're holding hands and singing in in the uh, swing k-i-s-s-i-n-g -S with will right now so i don't get what that's about and you're 50 and you're trying to live your life like it's golden at some point sheree invited all the ladies over to her i mean that basement is amazing here's the deal if sheree really can't afford as people keep rumoring uh that she cannot afford this space that she has created uh baby you can go ahead and do airbnb okay that's what you can do you can make that an airbnb place and continue to get some money to help pay that mortgage and other bills and tyrone's uh, commissary candy's so shady she was like she comes to the house she's like you know it's funny how you wouldn't even stand up for portia uh regarding a small doormat but you don't even have a doormat hmm candy shade fubba went on i was just laughing my ass off she was like Oh my God, when I see this space, I see money. Apparently she sold a lot of books, supposedly. And I want to say, and t-shirts. And tapped into Tyrone's Cayman Island bank accounts, probably. Which is why, I don't know if it's true, but I saw a post somewhere where allegedly the feds are looking into Sheree's uh, financial situation. Uh, as you know, Tyrone is there on some federal charges. I guess he was an investment Wall Street type guy and got caught up in some sort of... And let me tell y'all something. That stuff legit happens to people who are on the up and up. There is a woman um, that we did in this monologue I recently did uh, that was part of that... Uh, mortgage-backed security scandals she ended up going to prison federal pen for five years for something that she really didn't do and it's unfortunate i don't know what tyrone's background he could really be innocent but unfortunately sometimes these companies will set you up to where you have to be the fall guy or organizations that you've partnered with 
will set you up to be the fall guy. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, just because people are in prison don't mean that they're really guilty. And we got to be real about this. And I'm going off on and I'll get back on. But here's the thing. A lot of people don't ever want to go to jury duty. And then they complain about the injustice in the justice system. Well, part of justice is also for us as citizens to participate in the process of jury duty. Jurors are the ones who make decisions to decide who gets to stay in and who gets to stay out. And a lot of times you have people who don't give a damn. Uh, they're, you know, I mean, it's not always, but next time you get that jury summons, please don't get upset. But, oh, damn, I got summoned for jury duty. I know it's a sacrifice for some people because some companies don't pay you to go on jury duty, but it really, really, we need people of a higher level of thinking and intelligence uh, who can sit there and sort through uh, the legal jargon and ask the hard questions and do that. So I'm off my soapbox. I just wanted to say that just because you've been found to be guilty by a court of law sometimes doesn't mean that you actually are guilty. Look at all these DNA cases happening right now. So just keep that in mind. Then we find out that Shamia is not that great a friend as we thought she was to Portia. Sheree brings up a conversation about when Portia exits stage right to leave Barcelona and to get away from the mess and to avoid getting in any type of conflict with these women because Marlo really was like a fucking pit bull. She would not let it go. And we saw some of that behavior tonight with Marlo once again being a little aggressive. I don't know if she was being sincere, but for me, I know Portia probably like me, like, ah, you didn't bit me once, I'm good. But... What I will say is Sheree told the ladies that Shamia shared with her that when Portia left Barcelona, that she said that she be, should be careful and not trust any of the ladies, including her. And Sheree feels some type of way about that because she feels like she's really giving Portia a benefit of the doubt a lot. And yes, she has been a friend to Portia. And I really don't think that I've ever heard her repeat anything of sorts that Portia has said. But then again, here's the deal. The night of the party, it proved Portia's alleged point. And I'm prefacing, prefacing it as alleged because Shamia, I don't know if anybody else caught what Shamia said. Well, we know that Shamia and Sheree and Portia were all hanging out in Barcelona. So when one party left, there was only two left. And so, of course, they're going to talk amongst themselves, right? So I was confused, too. Portia was confused. It seems to me that Shamia basically just said that Portia said don't trust any of these ladies, just in general, not as in specific individuals, but just as a blanket statement, which is kind of offensive. But then again, I get it. And then Shamia said, well, what I said was, oh, this is what Portia said about don't trust any of the ladies. And then Sheree asked, does that include me too? So... I don't know what Shamia's response was. I didn't catch it. If you did, comment down below, but I don't think she responded to that. And then Portia was confused as to how, like, Shamia made Sheree privy to a text message that was shared between them. I was confused. Then on top of that, what makes Portia's alleged statement even more so valid is the fact that at the party, as per usual, Marlo Hampton shows up, which by the way, Marlo showed up at this party with one of her clients or her date as she prefaced it. But um, Sheree in turn goes and runs to Marlo Hampton to share with her what has transpired with her and Portia about the whole comment about not being trusted. So of course we all know that Marlo likes to not you know, latch on like a pit bull. So yeah, if the statement was said or confirmed that she said, don't trust Sheree, especially because that's how Sheree thought it was said, uh, then yeah, there is a lot of validity to Portia's alleged statement. That's all I'm gonna say about that.
And I like how one of my um, Twitter followers, and I consider her my Twitter friend, uh, Sheila Taylor Clark, said, Shamia trying uh, to get into the circle and get her own peach. She messy and wrong for throwing her supposed friend under the bus. And supposed is right because, honestly, Shamia should have never said anything. She should have just said, well, Portia told me, tell everybody bye. Because by far, Nene did it best when she let everybody know that Portia had left. But I said, there's just no loyalty in this game of peaches. It's like Game of Thrones, but it's Game of Peaches. I ain't never seen Game of Thrones, never been interested, so I don't know. But I'm just speculating based upon all the hype around. Speaking of Portia, uh, as you all know, there has been a revival of Two Can Play That Game. I think Two Can Play The Game originally was a movie. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. It starred Vivica A. Fox and Morris Chestnut. But I don't know if it was a stage play before that. But Portia is playing a starring role in, in the play. And, uh, you know, all the ladies were going to go support her. But, of course, Sheree didn't come. I think Kenya and Cynthia came. Her mom, her sister. I don't remember if anybody else came. I know Candy didn't come because Candy is still getting ready for her uh, escape tour at that time, which... <laughs> She was up here singing and practicing and rehearsing. Uh, and again, they showed Ace and I love it. He is so adorable and so cute. He reminds me of this little two-year-old I just got picked on. I got picked. He just came by. I was at a restaurant sitting by myself, a little coffee shop. And he just comes in. This little two-year-old, he just comes in and sits with me. And the irony of it is that his name is the same as my actual little brother's uh cj so little cj i don't know if you'll ever see this from your mom and dad just know that it was such a joy to share a donut or two with you but he was so cute and ace is so cute too but he was a perfect little gentleman he just sat down and you know just sat there and stared and fascinated with me i said little kids always seem to know like the person who loves the kids so uh, miss diva do love the kids i don't have any children uh, which i wanted to speak about that because someone uh made a comment about people that own dogs that can't have kids um it's not that i can't have kids i just don't have any okay i, I don't have a husband uh, so um no one has put a ring on well when i was 19 20 i was engaged but then what a nightmare but uh, i was engaged at one time and i haven't you know met anyone that wants to put a ring on it and therefore I don't want to be and, and it's fine for whatever what everyone else chooses but I just I don't I you know I just want to have a husband and in a in a stable family home to raise a child in because it takes work it takes work and I know it's hard being a single parent it, it's hard sometimes just being parents in general when you have these jobs and careers but you know I just wanted to say that just because people own dogs and they're over 40 doesn't mean that they can't have kids. It may have been a choice not to. Um, never been pregnant, never had an abortion, just never had, never, just haven't even tried to have children, honestly. So um, just want to put that out there. And plus, I think that some of us uh, don't have kids sometimes because we're meant to be part of the village. Everybody need a babysitter. Everybody need that friend. That's the auntie that can confide in the kids when they acting a fool. Okay. Uh, so I'm just saying, I just want to plug that in there and put that in there. So uh, the play was a hit. Kenya Moore did come. But one of the things I don't like about Kenya is that she is this nasty. First of all, I don't care for Kenya most of the time. But I will say that I appreciate some of the things she says when she stands up for certain people and she is pretty her skin may not be the best but you know sometimes you know we all have to enhance ourselves with makeup there's a couple of celebrities i've seen in person and i'm just like it really is true you have bad skin but the makeup it does wonders i don't have the greatest of skin either mine stay oily and sometimes i get a little pimple here and there so you know whatever but kenya is pretty i won't take that from her and but what I didn't like is that the place she stayed throwing shade like she said well I'm just here to support Portia and then she said something nasty and I'm like you could have just stopped at I'm here to support Portia to I don't know what, what she's trying I don't know what I'm and I was just like just leave it at that and then she took a shot at Vivica A. Fox I was like first of all that is my auntie Viv okay I know y'all be thinking about fresh but I call Vivica A. Fox my auntie Viv I don't know if she know that I love her um 
I don't give a fuck how many plastic surgeries she's had or whatever. She is still on her game. This woman has a very diverse portfolio. And I know one of the things I love is the wigs. Um, some of them, you know, I can take it or leave it. But for the most part, every Vivica A. Fox wig that I've ever purchased, every unit has been awesome. They're enduring, they're quality. Uh, she makes an excellent selection. Uh, her pursuing all these different projects and producing things, I think is awesome. Talking about, and I see she's still playing the same character from 20 years ago and 20 plastic surgeries ago. I'm like, but what play are you in? She said that Portia was playing just who she really is. That's just her type. And I'm just like, is that really necessary? Why don't you just sit there, enjoy the play, and give kudos? You wouldn't want anyone hating on you. You would have hated if the ladies had come and made bad comments, heaven forbid, about your PSA on domestic violence. It wouldn't have been appropriate, but they could have said something. I'm just saying. One of my one of my Twitter followers just posted, Kenya Moore is a hater and acted in B-movies and wasn't good at that. Hmm. Hmm. We all have a certain way we feel about people. Also, I know that that Candy, when she was doing her singing uh, with her family, I was like, she better go for that register, uh, that high register. Now, let me fast forward because we've been jumping around. Let's go back to the night of the party. Um, the night of the party, uh, everyone looked fabulous and awesome. I thought it was so cute how Candy came in as Pennywise from It. Kenya Moore came, people thought she was a black angel. I was like, that would be appropriate. You know, her heart is so dark. But she came as a Victoria's Secret model. Cynthia came as 50 Cent, okay, uh, of C unit, not G unit, but she came and she looked good as a man. Hell, even I was like, Ooh, did my nipple just get hard? No, true. <laughs> but um, everybody was attracted with all up on Cynthia. I was like, yeah, she is a good looking dude. And I don't know who Will was. Was he the nutty professor or somebody? Like um, Jerry Lewis type? I don't know. And again, this is why I said I don't always like Kenya. She's not my favorite person. But when she, when Kim and Croy came in there and she said, oh my God, what mask is this that Kim is wearing? And then we all looking like, what? And then of course we knew she was talking about that those plastic surgeons. I'm sorry. Kim has had entirely too much stuff done to her face and it no longer looks natural. It's like the lips look painfully bloated. They don't look natural. Uh, the face, it just, it's just not cute. But anyway, the shade that Kenya sh uh, uh, shaded, she was like, she has what mask is that Kim wearing? I was like, you know what? I'm dead. I am deceased. <sighs> So Marlo showed up with her old white man, one of her clients. That's a first. Greg and Nene had the last laugh. They are the king and queen of petty. She came as the exterminator and Greg was the roach. And then, of course, Kim was like, they live. They still got a roach of Just over there hating. And I'm just like, shut the fuck up, Kim. And then, of course, um, at one point, I don't know what they were talking about, but Eva got up and just exit stage left. Like, boing, like a Care Bear. Boing just gone like I ain't gonna be part of this mess right here I don't blame you girl just walk away from the mess sometimes I hope they give her a peach because even though she's not as open she adds a lot to the show so Bravo definitely keep Eva Marcel if she so chooses to come back I hope she does so both her and uh Sheree Eva and Sheree were dressed as Cleopatra and then Kim well you know she uh that I don't like uh, Eva's costume very well. This is a more memorable uh, Cleopatra. And Bravo shady asses, here they go. So did you? what did you think about Sheree's costume? And uh, Nene was like, Portia was like, ha! I mean, it's just like, why even do that? Why even pit them against each other? Like, what's the point of that? So fuck out of here, hater. So Marlo attempted this pseudo apology to Portia and Portia wouldn't look at her. And then Marlo decided I'm just going to follow her around this party the entire time and harass her. How inappropriate. She was like something about accountability. And that's when Portia was like, I don't need you to label me. And she just walked off, which I think is appropriate because with Marlo, you don't know if she's being sincere or if she's getting ready to jump boom and cut your ass. I mean, you just don't know. She's one of those. It's like that hood rat type. 
mentality where it's almost like a Tommy Lee moment too. Cause like, you just don't know. And women like that, they, you know, that probably came from not a lot or, you know, what, cause we know she was raised in foster care and some things happened to her. You just don't know. They jump full because they have this ingrained jealousy and hate for the pretty girls, good girls, and they don't want them to win. So, I mean, it's weird. I don't know how else to describe it, but yeah, Portia was good in steering clear of that. And I'm glad that she checked Nene about that account. But I'm not getting in front of everybody and, and, and apologizing for something. Y'all, basically, everyone is beating a dead horse if that's what they want from Portia. I mean, Marlo is a grown ass woman. That That is some, some elementary, I don't know any better. I'm still learning about myself type mess. You grown, now gone. Okay, just, just away away they announced that they were celebrating eva's birthday because i guess it was getting a little heated and candy was like maybe we should get some prizes away said the of course hands down one best costume contest at the end you know they do their little things uh portia had a successful run with two can play that game sheree baby tyrone ain't getting out till 2022 he was supposed to get out sometime this year that was the expectancy but parole denied uh so i would suggest that you get with candy and get you some bedroom candy, sugar. That's what you do. Okay. And consider that Airbnb proposal, okay? Cynthia is also still dating Will. They say that they're still getting to know one another. I was like, oh my God, are we still playing footsie? Uh, but either way, they showed the previews to next week's um, reunion. And it's going to be lit. It looks like Kim, as per usual, comes in for her five minutes, says some fucked up shit. Stuff starts being said to her and she walks off and goes crying to Troy. Croy. I almost called him Troy. Croy. Okay. So um, let me know what I missed. Comment down below. And let's talk about this uh, season finale, Nightmare on Peachtree Street. I think all the ladies did a great job of uh, with their costumes. Again, I would love to see Eva back. Ah, Shamia. Ugh. I liked Shamia until, but even then, I don't think, I really don't think that Shamia told Sheree that. I think Sheree made that up. But I still think that Shamia should have taken a positive role like Nene did. Um, Nene, of course, lost her uh, thing with the Uber driver comment that she made because that didn't sound like a joke. She told me it was one sided. I'm like, mm, that sound like that sound like somebody that was on stage and somebody said something you didn't like and you just said whatever came off the top of your head, even if you were trying to use it as a callback from the joke you may have formulated and told already. I don't know. I don't know. I would have to see, like you said, the whole tape, but she's still back on the road doing her comedy thing. Cause I remember one night I almost got heckled. I was at a, at a spot that I hit in Long Beach and dude, I said something about Texas. He didn't like it. He said, I hate people from Texas. I'm like, that's something to tell you something right now. And this is when I said, cause I didn't have like a comeback or anything, but I just wanted to let him know. Boom, Diva got the mic and I'm on stage. So right now I'm taller than you and my voice is louder than yours. Do you want me to let go and let have on that ass? So when you're a comedian, you can either come back or you can just get real aggressive with it, okay? Some people have excellent clapbacks, you know. Get you some, find you some, get with a friend that can write you some. I do have plans on reviewing the reunion, of course. I hope everyone had a great Easter, Resurrection Sunday. A lot of my friends who are now woke uh, do not believe this is the Easter season. I'm just thankful. To me personally, I just feel like it's just great to take time out to acknowledge uh, the sacrifice that Jesus, the son of God made for all of us. So I see it as a day set aside is, uh, is acknowledgement, but you know, same thing with Christmas. Uh, I don't look at the commercial, commercialized side of things. I'm just looking to be grateful for Jesus because as a Christian, I, that's who I believe in. I believe in Jesus. Okay. So before we go, I just finished watching, watch what happens live with Kenya Moore and Michael Rappaport. Oh my God, them two do not need to ever be guests together again. A talk about hate, the hate they were giving each other. Kenya was telling him he need to worry about his wife. And he was like, you need to worry about your husband. Tell me my husband take care of me. He takes very good care of me. He, he provides for me. And then I love how Andy brought up the fact that they were talking about how she was shading, uh, 
Portia when Portia was married to Cordell Stewart about how she took care of her husband. And I guess a guest had written in or Andy had even formulated the question, is it fair how you came at Portia and now you upset for Portia coming at you about your husband? I don't like Kenya. Let me not say that. Kenya's not my favorite housewife, but I have to give credit where credit is due again is the fact that she can throw some of the best shade ever in these confessionals. They be harsh as fuck, but this time this was true on Watch What Happens Live. She said Sheree's reaction to Mark being there about the nose ring and him being real. Oh, it, it, she was a little taken aback by that. And she said, um, here's a woman who had a fashion show with no fashions and built a man cave with no man. I said, oh, then Michael Rappaport shaded Kim Zosiak because Andy asked him, did he think she was racist? And he said, uh, with regards to the Roach comment, no. I was like, so there are some racist tendencies there. And let's remember that Michael Rappaport has also been accused of being racist or out of pocket. But I just don't see Remy as being racist. I think, you know, he may fly off at the lip. But sometimes what some people say is comments is not necessarily a Freudian slip. Sometimes it's just in the moment, he's the moment. Like, I'm going to go, I'm going to dig deep and just come out fighting. I must say I was surprised, and maybe it's a sign of maturity or a change with Kenya, when Andy asked her about, should Portia do what Nene wants? You know, stand before everybody. She said that standing in front of us like a firing squad. No, no, she doesn't need to do that. I was surprised. They asked her about the shading she gave Portia, especially when it came to the part about playing a whore in the two can play that game as well as shading Vivica Fox. She told me, I was just saying what everybody else was thinking. And she was like, there's always has to be a little bit of shade for this show. It just, it just has to be. She was like, I'm just shady. Cause I am. I was like, well, at least you can take ownership of who you are. King was sitting up there looking like a whole damn Easter basket in this dress. I was like, okay, Mrs. Day. And then another thing is when she was going in on, um, Michael Rappaport asked her, Michael Rappaport asked, do you take some responsibility in how Portia kind of has been deemed to be this person that sets off, is always set off because, you know, with the whole scepter say, ah, you need to be on medication. <laughs> you need to be on medication. But anyway, that's all I've got this time. This is all that I have. Be sure to comment down below, subscribe to this channel, and I will be reviewing Real Housewives of Potomac. So let's get into it. Let's see what the green eyed divas are up to. My soror Giselle and uh, my fellow NPHC Robin. And they've got a new girl, Candy. Sharice is going to be a friend of the show. So a uh, special guest. I don't know. But either way, thank you guys for joining. I have been Miss Sophia the Diva, and you guys have been all that.